Welcome to the reading room. Yeah. Welcome to the reading room. Yes, yeah. God. Welcome to the reading room. Oh. Welcome to the reading room. Here we yeah. go. Welcome to the reading room. Get ready. Welcome yeah. Welcome to the reading room. It's coming. Yeah. Read, read, read. All righty, bookworms. Welcome back to the reading room. ATL. I am the girl with the pearl tongue, Miss Courtney Foy. And I am your host with the most, Jason Jones. And I am Kenny T, also known as Chunky Monkey. And we're going to find out what that means one day. What? But in the meantime, we are going to take you um, to a different place right now. You know, there are things that we talk about that are kind of light and funny, but there are things that are serious that impact everyone mm -hmm. around us. And this definitely is one of them. What we're going to talk about in today's Straight No Chaser is abusive relationships, um, uh, more notably in the gay community. I think people... Um, see it differently when it's girl to girl and male to male. Right. Um, I've heard people have uh, mixed reviews from friends, family, and law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to abuse in uh, same-sex relationships. Um, so let's kick it out there. Um, what, what, what do you guys see, think, feel, know, experience? Where, where are we? So one thing to just put out there is abuse, we have to understand, is not just physical. Mm -hmm. this is true. So a lot of times when we hear the word abuse, a lot of people want to go straight to fighting or straight to the fist fist, right? Um, but there is the verbal, there is the mental, the emotional, there's mm -hmm. all those types of also abuse that people can go through. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to forget that because that right. is a true, you know, because that can lead to depression, can lead to suicide, can lead to, you know, all those things as well so and as a domestic abuse survivor I can say that um, the emotional and the verbal I feel is almost more damaging than the physical yeah. you know unless it's severely like a severe beating the wounds of that heal, heal and, you go, and you go on but those words resonate almost so far for me for a lifetime you know I still battle the things I heard about myself yeah. and battle uh, the, their truth. Yeah, but it, it makes your character. Mm -hmm. So think about it as a child. If you hear something all the time that develops who you are mm -hmm. as an adult, mm -hmm. True. and it is not just with children, as an adult, you can still develop because every day we're changing, every mm -hmm. day we're growing, every day we're becoming a new person mm -hmm. and stepping into a new stage, right? Mm -hmm. And we're still finding out who we are at 50 and 60 because who we were at 40, maybe that's not who we want to be anymore. Mm -hmm. right. However, words to me are a lot stronger than a fist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. Absolutely. You know, like from my standpoint, it's never, I've never been a victim of um, the physical abuse. Mm -hmm. Maybe emotional, maybe even use that type of thing. But mm -hmm. I have some friends and a friend in particular that I'm thinking of had a very tumultuous, physically um, violent relationship. I would be called in during the fight, please come get your friend. Because mm. unfortunately, he was dating my best friend mm. at the time. Um, and I would come over to the house. We live in the same complex. I would run over there, like, just to stop a murder. Um, and I would get there, the house would be trash, the glass would be everywhere, lacerations and open sores. and. Um, Get him! <laughs> and I'm like, first of all, they're both bigger than me. Mm. <laughs> right? Both of them are taller than me and bigger. And um, but I, you know, he man, I get in between them, and it just was so bad. It got to the point where I remember one Easter, we were going to church, all three of us, and um, my best friend at the time decided to pick an argument because he didn't want to go to church. And he had already booked <laughs> a date somewhere else. No, see. So he started, he, he would do this often. He would start friction to get his way. Mm -hmm. um, and my other friend, trying to not say his name, my other friend would um, fall into it every time. Yeah. And I remember, so they got into it. They're inside, outside of the church. We're walking to the church and they get into a physical altercation. And I'm like, appalled. It's like Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. We're in our and they're best. And there is Sunday's best. We're in our best. People, church members are like, oh my God, what are you doing? It's Easter. And oh I'm just God. so, I'm embarrassed. And I'm not even the one that's in it. And so I can only imagine the embarrassment that uh, my friend was having. 
So the one friend decided to get the because he, that was his goal to leave. So he left. And so I'm looking at my other friend like, you, you want to go home? And he was like, no, let's go to church. Mm, and I was okay. like, you're strong, baby, because uh, okay. I couldn't be in that home. church. I would have oh, okay. Because we're going to go to church and people are going to be like, yeah. that's, the, that's the boy that just got beat up. <laughs> right. It was just horrible. But that, that, when it comes to this kind of emotional and tumultuous relationships, I, other than seeing it, mm -hmm. I haven't really experienced it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I don't know. I... I really thought I would never be the, um, you know, sunglass wearing, um, bang over the, um, bruise, you know, person, the, um, you know, ridiculous stories <laughs> to, uh, you know, define what, where, where I may have gotten a mark or this, that from, um, until I was actually doing it. Um, you know, you find yourself sometimes, it's funny how in life you say, all the nevers mm. come back to bite you, you know. And when I say, when I saw friends that were going through the same thing, oh, that would never be me. You know, I wish a bitch would. Blah blah blah. All the sayings, you know. Right. Um, but it seems that the cycle of abuse starts way before the first hit, you know. And there's a a breaking down of who you are, um, and even that doesn't happen quickly nor does it happen um obviously mm -hmm. you know it's it starts off with little just just little bites oh that's what you thought nah girl no nah, that's nah man that's stupid man you can't do that you know oh okay and then that next time man you're so fucking stupid <sighs> you know and then and then it just escalates and escalates um and then all those minute things you know cloud everything to by the time you turn around and a fist lands, you know, you, you're already in a hole that you never knew you were actually in. Mm. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what is truly worse, the words or the fist, um, you know, because, you know, being kicked downstairs and um, being strangled and um, having a gun held, you know, was not, fun in any it wasn't it was there was nothing about it that was uh that you ever really get over right. um but you really still in all things? oh absolutely uh still in all the words and the deconstruction of yourself as a human being still linger just a little yeah. bit stronger yeah yeah that's tough i um i've never been in a physical Relationship. I've seen it, but mm -hmm. I've never been in one. However, I was in a emotional and mental, verbal, all that good stuff relationship for five years. And yeah, I let it last for five years. And I've always, if you know me, I've always been that confident person, that one where you can't tell me shit about mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I know who I am. Always been that person, but then you fall in love and it's just like their word matters. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. If they say something, you're thinking, oh, it's in my best interest. Mm -hmm. Why would they dare to say something to hurt me different yeah. or to mm -hmm. harm me or to do any of that, right? And but it just built and built and built and finally it was just I just it got to a point where I had one stage of depression. Mm -hmm. Um it was during when um one of my grandfathers passed and to add that on to everything, mm -hmm. I was a mess. Like mm -hmm. I was depressed, but I'm the type of person where you'll never see me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. inside, I'm just like totally. dead. Mm -hmm. Outside, I'm the, <laughs> you know, the, you know, the normal chunky monkey that everyone's used to seeing. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of tough. You never know what someone's going through. Absolutely. So the, and I, I think I, I, I experienced the same thing because um, one of the ways that we adopted as a cycle um, was, you know, we'd have a honeymoon period, something would happen um, that would cause a physical episode, and then I would get gifts and um, yeah. beautification and all kinds of stuff to take us back to the honeymoon period. So when I would walk around with my hair done and my nails done and, you know, wardrobe and this, that, and the other, everyone else was like, oh, she takes such good care of you. Oh, my God. You know, that, that's yeah. that nigga right there. She doing, you know, that type of thing. And all of it was just exterior ridiculousness, you know. And 
on the inside, I was completely broken and weak, you know. But we get around folk, I'd, you know, I'd hug, I'd kiss, you know, and all those things that really just kind of turned my stomach, really. It's that, I'm you know, I'm gonna punch you, but then right after, I'm gonna tell you I love mm -hmm, you, and I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. baby, it will tear happen again. Something just came over me. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. then the question is, how, what was your, um, light bulb moment to say, hey, I have to get out of it. Because I know for me, my light bulb moment was my best friend told me, Kenny, I don't recognize you. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. this is not the Kenny I'm used to. Because mm -hmm. no matter how much I masked it on the outside, like, mm -hmm. we go eat and stuff. And she could, that's my best friend for years, she could tell. Mm -hmm. And she would always say, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't recognize you. You're not the same person that does this and that clicked and I said I gotta get out of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what was I, it? I had a similar, well it, it built up um, over time. Number one it was um, when she stopped caring that my mom was around. Um, there was a time she when she respected that she was there and okay. she could play out the honeymoon thing while she was there. Mm -hmm. um, and then she just got to the point where she didn't even give a fuck about that no more, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you still ain't shit whether your mom is here or not, you know. Um, and so she then, would disrespect you even in front of your mm -hmm, mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, um, we went on a family trip and I think this is part of what upset her that I went somewhere without her and enjoyed myself and stayed a period of time that she felt was too long. Um, and, we, and we went somewhere where we like fed the animals was the thing. Um, so we came back and I was sitting on the edge of the bed waiting on my turn to shower because my mom was using our shower and She told me, you know, get your funky ass off the bed Why, why would you come here and sit on the fucking bed after you know everything you've done? Da, da, da. So I just sat on the floor. I didn't argue. I didn't you know, just put my head down sit on the floor So my mom comes out of the bathroom. She said, Courtney, what? And she just stopped Ooh. Because she knew exactly what, exactly what was going on and that motherfucker was sitting on the edge of the bed smoking her cigarette like Get your ass on to the room that we right. provided for you. Um, and then after that, it was when she abused me in front of her son, um, who was three, two or three at the time. Um, so then I knew, you know, because that was her world, you know, to, to a certain extent. So I knew when she, when she didn't care about him, I knew we were on a collision course at that right. point and that it was coming soon that something really bad was going to happen. Um, and then my friend uh, who had known me since college came to visit um, for one pride and she said, I don't recognize you. Yeah. And I, I looked at me one day and I cried. I, and and I did not recognize me. I did not look like Courtney. I, my light, my my spirit, my everything was Gone. completely drained. Diminished. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm do you? And, and this can be to you, Jason, since you saw it. Do you, as a friend on the outside, step in? So if like this happens to you, to me, to anybody, to your friend. <sighs> It's always tough to say, can you step in and mm -hmm. can you not? Because mm -hmm. it's just tough. Like, mm -hmm. do you step in, do you not? Because sometimes it's like, if I step in, my friend might hate me. And you, do, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, do you say, fuck it, that's my friend. I have to step in. If this affects it, it doesn't matter because we'll get back. Mm -hmm. But do you step in? Did you step in? When, okay, so the relationships are difficult. Like. Like you just explained, if you step in, then your friend becomes your enemy. They tag team against you. Um, but for me, if it's a true friend, I'm going to speak up. Um, and so my thing I did with this friend in particular, I kept asking him, what value is this person bringing into your relationship or to you, period? <clears throat> and when you can't answer that question... Mm -hmm. Or if you have to make excuses for their behavior, then that speaks volumes mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for itself. Like if if he had like the answer, oh he does this, this, that, or other, or he makes me feel this way. When every answer is um, an excuse mm -hmm. yeah, for mm -hmm. this person, yeah. then why are you with him? Mm -hmm. um, and if you need help getting out of it, I'm here. Yeah, um, I think, um, and I don't know about other people. For me. 
I couldn't find my voice to actually ask for the help, right. nor could I find my voice to say, please don't stop trying to help. Like I just, I didn't, it was, I, I, could, I didn't know how to say it, but on the inside I was like, please don't let, you know, my friends give up. Don't let them give up because one day I'm gonna find the sure. heart and I am gonna need them, but you know. So the girl, you need to come on, you know, I got, you know, you know, for long, the longest time it was no, no, no. But on the inside, it's like, just hold on. I'm not ready. I know well, for whatever reason, I know I'm not ready, but please don't give up yet. And I think this person had the same, like, um, it was kind of annoying mm -hmm. um, because he had to realize um, the the fact that it's a male on male. Mm -hmm. And he, I think it was an embarrassment on his part. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I should be able to handle this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm a guy, so I should be able to handle myself as a guy. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't mm -hmm. need outside help. But at the same time, Jason, don't forget about me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come check on me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And come and give me those positive things. I'm being torn down over there. Help build me back up. And I want to touch on that a little bit too, because uh, like I mentioned, law enforcement. You know, I ended up needing um, law enforcement to leave the relationship, yeah. and he totally did not treat the situation like I believe Same he would have treated him. it if it were male on female. Um, and at the time, now I'm activist Courtney. I would have been talking to his, you know, corporal or whoever I needed to talk to to get some results. But back then, I just wanted to leave. You know, so when he came, he was like, "I'm not entering that house with you." He's supposed to be my police escort. Um, she can bring her stuff out. So he allowed her to throw my things out of the door. Um, I said, well, can I go in? I pay bills here. I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't Absolutely. know. You know, and it just, I could tell that he was like, this is that gay shit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, and y'all two girls, you know, what y'all fighting for? You know, I could tell that our relationship wasn't valid. So therefore he was like, you know, I'll get this shit done so I can go about my business. And, and the same with them. Um, it was an incident where um, he tried to run over my friend. <laughs> well, didn't try. He hit him, oh. and he called the police. And the police just treated it like, "What you want me to do? Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. I can't sell it, what I'm gonna do? Mm -hmm. Be a police officer? Right, right. <laughs> do your, your job like you would if it was any, a male and yeah, a female. Yeah. If it was a male and a female, no question. Mm -hmm. The guy would have been arrested. Mm -hmm. It would have been happy. even if she had perpetuated it. The right. guy was still You're right. <laughs> Yeah, so I just, um, you know, I would encourage anybody out there um, that, well, first of all, if you're going through it, um, you know, just like, you know, I ended up to the point where I had to call, you know, a hotline and I thought I was going to have to go to a shelter and things like that. And the young lady told me, um, you know, don't beat myself up if I find that I go back, you know. Um, she said it is a cycle because I called her, you know, I got out. And I called her, um, you know, I said, I'm going back. And I was like, and I don't even know why. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, you know, it is cyclical. She's like, you're stuck in the cycle. She's like, my prayer for you is that you leave one day and you never go back, you know. Right. Um, and it doesn't take something drastic for that to do. She's like, on the other hand, I understand that you are in a cycle. It is something mentally that you're going to have to overcome. She said, so don't beat yourself up. If you're going back, go back. She said, go back because you will find your strength one day. So I want to encourage anyone out there um, uh, having the same issue. You will find your strength one day, hopefully before anything uh, really drastic happens. Um, you know, keep, keep in prayer, find positivity whenever you can, um, find people who lift you up so that you can counteract that person that's tearing you down. Yeah. So this has been our um, edition of Straight No Chaser. Mm -hmm. And it was definitely no chaser. Um, yes. Pretty raw. Um, there are going to be resources down below for you guys that um, are going through these situations. Or you have friends that are going through these situations that you can reach out to these um, websites and these individuals that can come and give some kind of help to those mm -hmm. situations. So this has been The Reading Room ACL. I always said the poor girl couldn't sing. The thing is, I, she has no passion for me. Like she could hit a note, mm -hmm. but where's the past? The, like, yeah, feeling? that Christine. We're talking about, um, yeah. well, because she ain't live. Right. Then there's that. That's, then there's that's that. All she has done is just sing, so she yeah. just sing. That's all she could do. Like the people that got something that that, that connect mm -hmm. is because like they don't the make them. Okay. They got a Fantasia. Yeah! Let me tell you, Fantasia, Brandy, and Jasmine doing a song together. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. <laughs>
They might bring R and B back. I think they have to be They might bring R and B back single handed. So we're talking about 